Hi, everyone. My name is Sebastian Sansa Santa Maria, former co founder of Residency Unlimited. And I'm Ashley Tucker. I'm the program director at Artistic Freedom Initiative. Oh. <laughs> Title's missing. Um, so today we're going to talk to you about a residency program for at-risk artists. It's titled the New York City Artist Safe Haven Prototype. The prototype supports artists who are persecuted for their work, threatened on the basis of their political or religious affiliations, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity, or has been forcibly displaced, needs a respite from dangerous situations, or from countries experience experiencing active violent conflict or oppression. The concept was workshopped back in 2011 when Residency Unlimited created a panel discussion on artist residencies in conflict areas in partnership with Goethe Institute and was subsequently workshopped at the Collaboration Laboratory on Wasan Island in Canada in his partnership with Three Dimensional. Some of you may know Three Dimensional as a 10 year project <laughs> activating at risk, supporting art at risk artists through the artist, International Artist Residency Network. And um, from that, the idea came that while it's complex and energy consuming and difficult to support, to get artists out of danger, once they are out and in places like New York City, they're left to the challenges that is being here with little access to community or resources. And so the premise is that like-minded organizations and institutions and initiatives would share resources together in support of artists who are here temporarily or permanently, depending on their situation. And so basically short-term, long-term, and um, providing resources like psychosocial resources, legal, housing, employment, education, professional development. Um, as, a si as my side from Residency Unlimited, which some of you know supports visual artists within the residency context, um, that organization would extend its professional development to a visual artist at risk. Um, and this was in 2012, so seven years later. Uh, the challenges that happened back then that took so long for the program to take form was basically what everyone deals with in this city, and that's housing. So, um, so it took a while to get to it. So now we're going to get to it. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sort of how this coalition came together and what each one of these partner organizations represents within the coalition. Um, it really started, as Seb said, with the housing. Um, West Beth, some of you may know West Beth Artist Community over in the West Village of Manhattan. It's been around for a long time, very much an institution. They approached um, Todd Lester, formerly of Free Dimensional, now of ArtistSafety.net, um, with the idea in mind that they had a, a little bit of surplus housing and they wanted to utilize that for the purposes of helping in some way with the, um, with the Syrian refugee crisis. And in speaking with Todd, uh, he kind of steered them in the direction of looking at at-risk artists as um, a really interesting and, and important way that they could contribute this surplus housing. At-risk artists may need a shorter term housing period than perhaps a refugee might need, for example. So it seemed like this was a smart way for West Beth to utilize this resource. Um, some of the other resources that were missing in the development of this program were legal services, for example. If we're talking about artists who are coming from other countries, certainly if there are no immigration attorneys who can help them with the legal work that they need to be able to stay and work and continue to create art, then again, it's not possible. So. 
Todd and um, artistsafety.net were really called upon to be sort of the masterminds between, b behind developing the strategy and capacity building. They began to identify some various partners that they could bring on board who would really sort of complete the picture and fill in the gaps that, that had existed since 2012, um, as Seb mentioned. So the first organization is um, the one that I'm the program director of, Artistic Freedom Initiative. Um, we, our, our mission is essentially as immigration and human rights attorneys to provide pro bono immigration representation to artists under threat. So in addition to that, we also facilitate resettlement assistance that looks like matching artists with residency programs, grant fellowship opportunities, emergency funds, things of that nature. And um, this residency program is a part of that resettlement assistance that we offer. Uh, lastly, we also partner with um, arts and culture organizations, museums, galleries, um, curators to put on um, exhibitions, performances, any, and create these platforms and opportunities for artists to showcase their work. So our contribution to the coalition is primarily providing um, the legal services that these artists need in order to be able to stay and work. The Westbeth, of course, um, providing that critical piece of the puzzle. Um, they've offered us, at this point, we have two active units and we are hoping to extend that up to six over the course of a few years. Um, it's, this is a look inside actually the first studio that they offered us. Um, I am very proud to say that I went shopping at Ikea and got all the furniture for this and built it all myself, including a bed frame. Pretty impressive, right? So not only do we offer legal services, but Ikea construction <laughs> services as well. We have a second unit that's active now, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And so then Residency Unlimited provides the artistic support. Um, Residency Unlimited started in 2009 as a sort of alternative format to, to the centralized uh, studio structures, like studio programs that exist in the city. And um, the program really sort of is in tune with the concept of the partnership that is that Residency Unlimited is, is, has an event space, but Essentially, it works in a horizontal, decentralized way, and it really thrives by creating relationships and partnerships with other organizations and other institutions, whether it's to levy a gallery or a studio space or help an artist ride a horse down Broadway. I did that once. <laughs> um, and, um, and yeah, so it's really, it, it provides the resources that a visual artist um, would need to nurture its, uh, his or her practice. And then artistsafety.net really is sort of the resting place for the original free dimensional um, and critical resistance fund, which started almost now 15 years ago. Um, Todd Lesser, the founder, um, started with free dimensional and then, and then essentially really plays a role as, as the glue for all the coalition partners for this prototype. And, and also provide sort of expertise on intake and experience on the complexities of identifying and activating artists at risk. Uh, the PEN America's Artists at Risk Connection is a relatively new program, though PEN America's been around for a long time. Uh, they work, they are a free expression advocacy organization essentially working with writers at risk. So the second unit that's currently active at the Westbeth is managed by PEN and Artists at Risk Connection in conjunction with Fordham University, who has made space uh, for a, a writer at risk to do a teaching fellowship at Fordham University. So we have a, a visual artist in the first unit and a writer in the second unit. These are our artists. Uh, Hadi Nasiri was our very first artist in the first unit. He's um, from Iran, visual artist, multidisciplinary though, also interested in film. Um, the second Artist here, Kanchana, she's the writer at risk that I mentioned, she's in the second unit. Hadi completed his uh, year-long fellowship residency at the Westbeth with us um, in the summer, this past summer, and he's since been replaced by our second visual artist in residence, uh, Rashwan Abdelbaki, who is from Syria. He is a, a painter and printmaker, um, and we're very excited to share that he will be on exhibit in um, in December at the Queen's Museum, we're opening a show there for a month and he will have his beautiful paintings there. So come and see him and meet him. <laughs> and then the project is supported by the Shelley, Don and Rubel, uh, Rubin Foundation, 
the Art and Social Justice Grant um, that we got funded for this year, and we're actively um, awaiting the answer for next year. Um, yeah. And then upcoming, Ashley. So this is what's in store. We are hoping to expand the project to up to six units so we can provide for more artists. Um, we are working on a guide to safety hosting that's New York City specific and that can be replicated to our other, ci other cities. And in conjunction with that, we wanna do some workshops and training for folks who are interested in trying to do something similar. And there's our new website, so check it out. <laughs> Thank you.